How's it going y'all? Today I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you how I shot this product video in my own living room. I still can't believe I shot that at home. Hey again, and awesome to have you tuned in. So let's jump right into the behind the scenes and hopefully also get inspired with some of the tricks I used while making this video. First, I built up my own home studio. For this, you're good with any two stands that can hold up a background support for your backdrop. For this shoot, I chose to use deep blue cardboard as my backdrop and rolled in our kitchen aisle to work as a base for the product. And like I said, you can do this at home. You don't always need to rent out that fancy studio. And then moving on to the lights. No matter what you shoot, you should always try to include some lighting to your videos. Especially if you plan to shoot on a commercial level, then I highly advise you to invest in some light gear. With proper lighting, you get to play more around with the shadows and get more dynamic shots. It just ups the quality and makes your films look more professional. I got my Aperture 120D and I use it as a key light. Not shooting it like all the way from above, but a little bit from the side. And I wanna get like a nice glow on the chin bottle. On top of the key light, I'm using a small LED in the back of the table. I'll get to have a spot for the gin in the background. And uh, I wanna center it like really, really nice so that it's gonna be right behind the gin bottle. And then on top of that, we're using a small, this is extra, but we're using a small LED flashlight as well. And that's gonna light up the back of the bottle. We'll get the label logo to really pop up and uh, be visible for the camera. Uh, we're using this small plastic, it's not, it's not really glass, it's plastic. And we're using that as the base so that that kind of sort of with the key light gives us a reflection of the bottle and it's gonna look really, really slick and nice. So first we're gonna set up our opening and ending shot and that is because we want an untouched bottle. We don't wanna open the etiquette or anything, nor do we wanna pour out any of the gin yet. So that's where we're gonna start. Doing it this way was super crucial since I only have this one bottle. I wanted to shoot every single inch of it untouched before I'd move closer to more detailed shots. So that one shot where I have my camera pulling closer to the bottle turned out to be harder to pull off what I'd expected. It's tricky because I don't have tracks. So I'm using woolen socks to slide my tripod and uh, hopefully get a clean shot. I mean, this just shows how little you actually need to spend on gear when you can just be creative around the problems you have. When I wanted to film the label while the bottle was spinning, instead of having an electronic spinner, I just let my camera roll with a locked focus and used a cup beneath the bottle to make it spin with my hands. Okay, so this next shot is a wee bit tricky. I actually saw a guy doing this on YouTube. This guy, Austin Paul. Thanks for the great tip, man. And uh, that inspired me to try it out as well. I wanna have like a POV shot from the bottom of the bottle where we see all the gin coming out and falling into the glass. And for that, I cut a plastic bottle and we're gonna use the Roblins just to go through the bottle, like so. This is my first time using this, and I just realized that you really need those tracks because it's really unstable. Fingers crossed. And go. Yes. Even though this shot took me like 20 takes, I'm super happy how it turned out in the end, with the tracks or not. Other shot I wanted to go handheld with was when the gin was being poured out. This way I felt like I was able to bring more speed and action to this video. And for the underwater shots, I actually didn't need that big of a tank. I just shot them in this wine glass. 
These were shot with that same straw-like Lava Pro lens. Just super awesome lens that allows you to film in a tight, tiny places. And that's it for this video. Please leave a thumbs up if you found it helpful. For more tutorials, you can check out my previous video about stop motion animation. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you back on the next one.